Honda's latest model, the ENY1, is a small EV SUV. Today I'm going to look inside and outside, drive it, talk about range and specifications. If that sounds good, make sure to keep watching till the end to get a full overview of the ENY1. If you're new to my channel, my name's Sam. This is the Car Code YouTube channel. I make brand new car content every single week. So let's start with the exterior design on the ENY1. Of course, it's clear that it's based on the Honda HRV, which is the small SUV from Honda. You can click in the pop-out banner to watch my review on that self-charging hybrid. This has a few little differences. The main one that we can tell from the offset is this new color, which is called Aqua Topaz, which is quite out there. It's sort of a sky blue. Personally, I prefer a bit of a darker color, I think. I do like it, but I don't love it. And I think a lot of people are, are kind of the same with it. It's probably not what I would pick, but I do like bright colors overall. So maybe it'll grow on me a bit more. As standard, it comes in crystal black pearlescent paintwork and you have five color options in total. And they also correspond to the interior color you have as well. So standard, you get the crystal black. All the other paint options are a 650 pound option. So you have this aqua topaz, you have the vermilion red, you have the new urban gray and the platinum white, that's it. At the front, the grille is different. It's sort of all one piece and that's sort of the main difference. You have these lights for charging as well and your parking camera on this advanced model. You can get this in black all around here for 890 pound option. And I actually think that looks really cool. It does suit body color, but I actually do quite like the contrasting a little bit more. You can get different packs and things like that as well on it. Overall, it has a very familiar look, the same lights as the HRV, etc. It's a pretty smart design. These are the standard alloy wheels, 18 inch diamond cut. You can notice there's lots of spokes and this creates a more aerodynamic design. The more being 18 inches, you get a really good ride comfort, the same as on the HRV. There are also two different options of optional extra alloy wheels, both 18 inches. You have the HR 1813s, which are in a gloss black and a different design. I actually think these are really lovely wheels. They come in at £1,420, so they're not cheap at all. And you also have the HR 1812s, which are the same design as the HR 1813s, but they are diamond cut, so they're a two-tone look. They're also available on the HRV SUV. To save yourself £1,400, these standard wheels are pretty nice. However, the gloss black wheels do look really good in my opinion. Coming to the side of the ENY1, in terms of size, it's around six centimeters longer and it is a little bit taller as well. And you do notice that it's a bit higher off the ground. That's because the batteries are actually mounted underneath. They actually do seem to be quite low down underneath the car. You can see you've still got your concealed rear door handles. However, they are now in a gloss black. I think the actual matte plastic feels a little bit better with things like this. You get these gloss black door mirrors on all models as well. And tinted windows are standard for elegance and advance. So across the range is great. The main difference on the outside is your roof. The panoramic roof is on your advanced model, not on the elegance. You've got the electric tailgate on this advanced model. That's the only really exterior differences between the two grades. The back of the ENY1, this is where we notice more differences from the HRV on which it is based. So you have this fully clear tail lamp bar like you would get on the top of the range advanced style HRV. Instead of having the Honda badge here though, you have Honda spelt across the tailgate. So that is gonna be on all the new EN electric Honda vehicles. We're gonna see it spelt across. Also on the concept of the different EN vehicles, they've actually got that same Honda branding on the steering wheel of the car. So we can expect to see that in the future as well. However, for now, this Honda has just got a Honda badge in the steering wheel. You also have the ENY1 badge here as well, which is quite a large badge and really shows what the car is. I do dread to think how much extra this costs them to make this whole new part because they needed to move the logo and put it here. It is nice so that it's continuous, but I think I actually do prefer the back of the HRV instead of this ENY1. It's trying to make something a bit different when really it doesn't add a lot to, to the car, these small changes. 
So what is the boot space like on the ENY1? Let's have a look. The HRV has a boot space of 335 litres. Now you may think being a fully electric car that this vehicle would have less boot space, but in fact it has more. It's got 361 litres of boot space, which sounds pretty good. And for a small SUV, it's not too bad. Looking at cheaper alternatives with the boot space, a Volkswagen ID3 offers 385 litres of boot space. And if you want an SUV for a similar type of cost, a BMW iX1 has a huge 490 litres of boot space. So 361 doesn't sound massive. However, it's much bigger than the 310 litres on the Vauxhall Mocha Electric. And on the same platform, the Jeep Avenger, which has 355 litres, it trumps that by six litres. You do have some useful underfloor storage for your cables, which is great. And you can actually move the floor down as well if you're not using it for the cable storage. The car comes with the two cables, the charger port type cable and the three pin cable as well. If you were to buy those separately, the three pin plug is about £400 officially and the charger one's about 250 so don't lose those because they're not cheap to replace. You've got your subwoofer in the back here. For a small car like this, you'll probably be absolutely fine on the Elegance, which has a manual boot. It's not electric, but it is a pretty light tailgate anyway. And for your rear passengers, what are they going to think of the ENY1? Well, it is actually comfier than the HRV. These leatherette seats are extremely comfortable, which is great. The middle seat on the HRV was hardly usable, so let's see what it's like now. It's a little bit comfier, and obviously you don't have a transmission tunnel, so that's better. You do have your centre armrests, which I would have hoped would stop about there. same problem as the HRV that's not been rectified do you lose any practicality in terms of the seats well yes you do they're not magic seats anymore so they don't lift up and flip up and folding them they don't even go completely flat anymore they are quite bulky so that is a shame you gain boot space but you lose the magic seats and the practicality that they bring you do have this glass rear roof in the advance and in the elegance you just have a light roof lining so you can see here you've got the panoramic glass roof on the advance model and you've got this sort of envelope like thing but they could have just made it a retractable blind so it's like not something that you have to get out and do so you have to put these bits in here like that and then you have to clip these in and that's one and then you have to get your other one and do the same. Put them in there and then they click in. So then you don't have any light in the back and you can't just easily pull it across like the front one. I'm not too sure why they did that. So I'd probably just leave these down most of the time. However, if you've got kids or pets and they need extra shade, you may just want to leave those on. So then let's take the ENY1 for a drive, see what it's like. Currently, all ENY1s are front wheel drive only. Put foot down. And it picks up very quickly, actually. So there's no issues with speed. It doesn't feel like a slow vehicle. It's 204 PS, which is 201 brake horsepower. Exactly the same output as a Volkswagen ID3. However, the ID3 has the power to the rear wheels, whereas the ENY1 powers the front wheels. They've done quite a good job with the suspension, not making it too stiff and overcompensating for this heavy vehicle, but not making it too sloppy. And you don't feel exactly like you're in the car, driving the car. You feel like you're sitting on top of the car very much so, which lots of people won't mind and they'll quite like it, but you don't feel quite as connected to the car as you would in other EVs like the MG4, for example, or the Cupra Born. In both of those cars, granted, you are closer to the ground, but it still goes without saying that some other EVs are going to give you a little bit of a preferable driving experience than the ENY1. If you, though, value comfort and luxuries, then the ENY1 might be the perfect car for you. The motors are quite noisy. They can be kind of fun, I suppose, because you can hear like zoom, zoom. 
but a lot of the time not as refined as you might want. The figures on paper are pretty good. It's got an official range of 256 miles. I'm using my regen on max. Okay, it's not as strong as other cars actually. I think it's actually stronger the regen on the HRV hybrid than this car. A lot of people don't like electric cars, but like you can't deny they're not giving you a lack of power anywhere. And I'm not a speed freak. Oh, a little bit of lack of traction there, even though it's front wheel drive. I find electric cars do have that issue, and I think it's a lot to do with the wheels, because of course, the narrower the wheel, the more efficient the car can be. But I even had that problem with the Say At Me electric. That's something where petrol cars and diesel cars seem to always win on, because of course, it's not gonna be the tires on this car, because it's a brand new vehicle. <laughs> with 241 miles on it. This is what I was saying about the regen. It's on max regen now, I'm going 45 down a hill. It's just kind of keeping me at the 45, 44. It's not that strong. That could be a lot stronger and it is on a lot of other electric cars. So that's another critique of the ENY1. It can be fun, like you push it, but you're not getting that connection to the car that you can get in lots of ice cars but also in some evs as well you do sit quite high up as well and i feel high up because you are a little higher up than the hrv it's very good with safety and things like that like it's very on the ball with your safety features which is great i don't think there's much excuse to be honest for manufacturers to not be on the ball with their safety features on electric cars or on cars at this cost And how about in the front of the ENY1? It does feel a little bit futuristic. I like what they've done. You've got this 10.25 inch instrument cluster. It's hard to call it an instrument cluster because it's a screen essentially. The seats are comfortable enough. You don't have adjustable lumbar support, which is a little annoying. I would have really thought that they would have put that in. You get this black leverette on the Elegance and on the Advance you have choice of black leverette or the light grey. Light grey is quite nice. They both offer nice sort of touches. This sunroof, you've got a little blind, so it goes back or forward. It doesn't actually open though, so you can't open the roof fully. This is the new 15.1 inch center display. The climate controls are through the screen. However, they're at the bottom of the screen, so they're always there. It's very Jaguar Land Rover kind of design that. Then you've got your sort of DAB radio on the middle and then a clock, or you can have the camera or the navigation on the top. So you can kind of decide what you want. It's very thin bezeled screen. I dread to think how much this costs and if it added a lot to the cost of the car passed on to the customer because the nine inch infotainment screen on the hrv there's nothing wrong with that i suppose they wanted to give the wow factor with this vehicle but of course the wow factor comes at the wow factor price as well so a little bit of a better view on the 15.1 inch honda connect screen and you can clearly see the three different sections and you can kind of configure it to how you want the climate always stays exactly where it is this middle section you can have it display what you want in reality it's not too distracting because that's the only bit that's additional if that makes sense because your climate controls could just be buttons anyway that could have just been physical controls there was nothing wrong with those which are about this big on a hrv this middle section i'd probably just leave that on my dav radio stations so i do actually like that about it that i can have my favorite dav stations there and my apple car play on at the same time slightly facing away from the driver but not majorly so it's nothing too bad i'll show you the multi-view cameras you can use the little button on the end of the stalk to see the different angles you've got the both sides feature so you can see each side you've got that one if you press the parking button it gives you this 3d look as well and it can park for you apparently on this advanced model however i really think that people should be parking themselves good thing about this one the second electric honda is it's actually got door mirrors rather than camera mirrors i think they've made the right decision by just keeping the actual mirrors 
This lever up steering wheel is rather nice, fully round. I like what Honda's been doing with their steering wheels. It does feel nice. You do have the heating on this advanced model and the Honda logo is white because it is an electric vehicle. This is really good quality, the synthetic lever stitch dash. This, however, doesn't feel that good quality. Bit cheap feeling at the tops. But this screen feels very expensive. You do have a bit of gloss black, which already looks a bit dusty. I'm not a fan of that. And your armrest, of course, is not adjustable. But it's pretty solid. It does feel pretty good quality and screwed together, which you'd hope for, for the starting price of around £45,000. So how about charging your ENY1? Well, first of all, the charge port's at the front of the car. I personally think placing it at the back of the car would have been a much cleverer idea. It's capable of AC and DC type fast charging too, and it'll fast charge up to 76 kilowatts, which gives you 20 to 80% in around 45 minutes, which is about 15 minutes longer than most other vehicles. And it does the normal charge of up to 11 kilowatts, which is half of what most cars can do also. That means home charging, could take around seven hours to fully charge on 11 kilowatts. If you're charging at home a lot of the time, that's fine anyway. If you need it to be really quick, the ENY one's probably not the car for you, but this may be good for the longevity of the batteries. So it's quite easy to charge, but again, your placement's at the front. You press this little button and the front comes up electronically. You have to push it manually though back. Pod points give you 15 minutes of free charging. Here you go. So you have to obviously confirm on the app with the pod point one, but of course it will start charging. These things glow blue when it's charging, as you can see. So that means the car is now charging and you get 15 minutes free. This is a seven kilowatt charger. So really it's not gonna put in a lot in 15 minutes. <laughs> it would fully charge this car seven kilowatts in around nine hours. So there is definitely easier charger ports out there that have the car charger port at the back i don't think the front is the most practical i press a little button on the car to release it and it makes a noise and you can get it out and then it should let you get it out of the point like so and then you can put these under the boot floor which is excellent you just have to push this shut something that one of my great automotive inspirations has said of her review on the ENY1 for Electroheads is if you had a front bump, imagine the cost and also the inconvenience of having the charger point at the front. That was another thing that they possibly didn't think about very well when designing the ENY1. It's an oversight, essentially. At least it doesn't gather rain in it, though, like the Honda E could. The storage for the cables, which is always good to have just such a convenient feature so what will an eny1 set you back well it starts at 44,995, and the advanced model starts at just over forty-seven thousand pounds this model test today has the option of the aqua topaz paintwork and being the advanced this one costs almost forty-eight thousand pounds it's a lot of money it really is of course it's a lot of car it comes with everything it's got a lot of range on it now as well but I was looking at different cars and I priced up my dream iX1 BMW, which is a bit bigger, has a much bigger boot space and more, just a better car overall, if we're being honest, more range too. That was around 51,000, I think, for my dream one. However, monthly wise, it may work out quite well. They've got a good promotion. They've got two and a half thousand pound deposit contribution, extra 500 pound test drive incentive and low APR rate as well on the ENY1. So it's definitely a car to consider. It is a good electric car. A few things do let it down, like the space inside, the price, the sagging battery underneath. But other than that, it is a nice option. If you're on a work lease or scheme, it may actually work out fine for you. So yeah, it's a good car. I wanna say a huge thanks to Kendall Honda for making this video possible. The links are in the description down below. Like I say, they have got a good promotion on the ENY1 for its launch and it's likely to go up again next year in price. If you do like new car reviews, please make sure to hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in my next video.